Assalamu alaikum. So somebody asked me to make a video to explain the importance of covering and how we cover, right? Like what, how, how do we cover? What are we supposed to cover? I guess the etiquette of covering, right? And so I wanted to start off by saying, why do we cover? Like a way to look at it, like why do we cover? I know we cover for the sake of Allah because Allah tells us to, so we cover, right? Now, if you look at the way Allah designed things, you see that He has made things of value, things that are precious, hard to get to, right? If you look at where's gold, where's rubies and diamonds and pearls, He didn't just make them right at the surface for everybody to go and just be able to take or rob it, right? He didn't. He made gold hard to get to. You have to dig. You can't just dig with your hands. You got to use tools and you have to dig and you have to mine it. Same thing with pearls. You have to go to the bottom of the ocean and get the get, get the clams and then get the pearl out of it, you know? So everything that he has created, not everything, but things that he's created with value, he's made it hard to get to. Rubies and diamonds and emeralds, everything. Precious, precious jewels. You have to work hard to get. And so, in Islam, that's how the woman is, right? We're a precious jewel. So, we're not going to be out here uncovered and easy for everybody to see the value, the the beauty of it, right? No, he's, we're not like that. That's not us, you know? And if you think about it a little further... When you go to somebody's house, right? You go to their house and everybody's sitting down. What's on their table? It's not all their money. It's not all their, their, their gold or their deeds to stuff. That's not what's there, right? They keep all of that stuff in, in, in the bank in a safe or in a safe in their house in the ground or something, right? It's not just all out there for everybody to see. And in Islam, the woman is more valuable than all of that. So if they protect their money, if they protect their gold, if they protect all of that, why do they not protect their women like that? Why are they not protecting their daughters like that? Why do they just have them out there for everyone to see, right? In Islam, we don't do that. We're precious jewels. We're more precious than that. No matter what it was, that Allah created and we think it's so valuable, Allah created us more valuable than all of that. So if we take all those precautions to protect all of these things, why do we not protect ourselves more? Why do we not protect uh, other women more, right? Our, our, our wives, our daughters and stuff. So that's a way to look at another way of why we cover, right? Because we're more valuable than that to just be out here for everybody, for these thieves to see and want to steal, right? No, that's not us, all right? We stay covered with precious. Now, as far as the etiquettes, right? So, so covering, we're supposed to cover our beauty, right? And that's, that's deep. Now, I think the more you understand your value, the more you understand your beauty, the more you understand your worth, the more you cover, right? So when I first became Muslim, I said, okay, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take my shahada. I'm going to become Muslim, but I'm never going to dress like one. I'll never, uh, I'll never dress, my cat, I'll never dress like a Muslim. And so... That just goes to show how we plan, but Allah is the ultimate planner. And so I, I, I said, okay, I'll never dress like one. Now look at me, right? So um, I started off, I didn't dress like this. I started off with wearing hijab and short sleeves and skinny jeans. That was my beginning hijab. And through understanding and the whole process, I started covering more. I remember... I remember I went to the 96th Street Masjid and I went to pray and the sister tried to give me a blanket to pray with and I looked at her like she was crazy because I didn't understand how women aren't supposed to dress like men, right? And so us wearing pants and 
stuff is imitating them is dressing like them so I didn't get all of that and I didn't get the whole thing of covering your shape and hiding your shape concealing it and so I didn't understand what she was saying to me so here's something nice that she was trying to do and I was taking it as something wrong right and so that's one thing right you're not supposed to see your shape and that's the whole difference in covering properly and then just wrapping my cat all right so that's the difference between the both right so when we wear a hijab we don't want it to be tight to where you can see any shape because then that's wrapping is it really covering no you can still see everything you're just covering you're just adding well you're wrapping you're just adding a, a layer to your skin almost so you're not supposed to be able to see your shape right so jeans um fitted clothes that that's not that's not right because you can't you can still see everything that's underneath it so the whole point in covering is to conceal it right so you don't want somebody to be able to look and to see exactly what's under there now we are allowed to show our face and we're allowed to show our hands but everything else should be covered um with the hijab we're allowed to show our face so that doesn't mean that we show our ears it doesn't mean that we show our necks um under our necks our, our under our chins right well you know like your neck part right so you don't show all of that you you conceal it that's all part of your beauty and again, like I was saying, the more you understand your beauty, your value, the more you'll cover it. The more you'll conceal, conceal it, protect it. So back to when I first became Muslim, right? And I started dressing Islamically. And I remember I used to still wear um, hijabs. So now I started wearing hijabs and I'd wear dresses. Like I'd wear the dresses. And I wouldn't really want to wear that dress unless it was fitted. You know, like if um, parts of me was still showing, I didn't want to wear it. And then I noticed that when I went out, I still had guys trying to talk to me. It would be guys, you know, non-Muslim men. And here I am thinking, okay, so I'm covering, you know, I'm wearing hijab and it's protecting me. But still, it, it wasn't. I still had um, men who weren't even Muslim trying to talk to me. And... Um, so I started noticing these little things and I started understanding, okay, so I'm not doing something right. You know, I'm not concealing my beauty. I'm not doing something right. And so then that was like the gradual stage to me keep on concealing my beauty and not wanting to show it and expose it to others. Um, and when you think about it, it's not only a sin for you to expose your beauty, but you're also making it so others sin also. You know, if you're out here looking beautiful, yeah, you're, you know, beautiful and showing your beauty. You're also making it so brothers sin too. And that's not right. You know, we're all human. So we're going to look. We see something that's beautiful. We're going to look. So that's another thing, you know. And all depending on how deep you want to look at it, you know. But I was thinking about that too. Like, why am I causing a brother to sin? Yeah, I know he could look down. He could lower his gaze. But I'm not making it easy for him to do that. And so this was all part of me wanting to conceal my beauty more. So, you know, these are all things that I thought about as far um, as my process into starting to cover and everything. Um, so it's really concealing your beauty, you know. And once you understand how even the way you stand, you know. It's more than just the clothes that you wear. It's really all the way you interact. It's the way you move, um, different stuff like that. I remember um, I used to wear heels. Of course, I wore heels before I was Muslim. And then when I became Muslim and I started uh, covering and everything, I wanted to still have that height of a heel. And I was like, okay, so what makes a heel not halal? And I said, okay, so it's the noise that it makes, right? And so, because um, you're not supposed to walk and people hear you. So the jewelry that moves you know you're not supposed to hear you know the banging of the jewelry moving um the clicking of the heels you shouldn't hear this so i said okay i'm gonna find some rubber heels like 
some heels that wouldn't make noise when I walk. So I did. And I thought I found the perfect pair of boots, right? And I was so excited. I just loved them. And so I put them on and I wore them one day and I was walking in the city. And talk about embarrassed. I was so embarrassed. Not because anybody else probably looked at me any different, just because of myself and I knew. Here I was trying to conceal my beauty, but then I had on these heels that were making me walk and switch my hips, you know? And that contradicts me concealing my beauty, you know? I'm not supposed, to, it just contradicts what it is that how I want to represent Islam and what it is that I do. And so, um, yeah, I was totally embarrassed. I just wanted to disappear that day. I just wanted to throw the shoes away and just get them off. I, I felt so horrible. So it's just little things like that that you'll start to um, notice once you get more in tune, right? And so, um, but yeah, those heels. So that helped me understand, you know, so it was more than just the noise. It's actually how it makes you walk and things like that. So the heels, no. <laughs> Um, I understood that. So that was like <clears throat> a process of getting rid of that. And now, um, so it's just like in yourself, you'll start to reevaluate yourself and you'll understand. Um, also to concealing your beauty and um, covering hal halal and just being a Muslim sister. So also it's ways that you stand, you know, you could cover in everything and it, it's ways that you stand you know I wouldn't stand with like my hands on my hips like you don't do that you know it accentuates your body and stuff so it's just little things like this that you'll start to little etiquettes of being a Muslim and acting Islamically that you'll start to understand but yeah so you want to make sure that you're concealing all your beauty and your beauty does extend past what your physical thing is um yeah it does extend past of what you just see here it's your actions the way you move and stuff so you always want to be conscious of that also but it's a lot she had some kind of insight a little bit about why we cover and how we should cover so just remember you know, we're covering because to conceal our beauty. So if there's certain things that make you feel like when you're leaving the house and you're looking in the mirror, if you're looking to see like, oh, is my lipstick on right? Or, oh, is this looking right? Or is that looking right? You know, trying to make it look pretty to walk out the house, then you're doing something wrong because that's not what you should be doing. You shouldn't be looking in the mirror before you leave the house to make sure that you're looking prettier. You know, you still want to look good. You know, you want to be clean and neat, but you don't want to do things to attract people to you, to attract people to your beauty. You know, that's all stuff in the house. So you don't want to do that. You want to conceal it. So you don't want to look in the mirror and make sure that you're looking pretty to go out. You want to make sure you're covered for the sake of Allah. You want to make sure your hair is not hanging out the edge. You know, I try to make sure that my hair, sometimes I have hairs coming out of here and I try to make sure that it's all tucked in. I try to make sure that my dresses, my skirts are long enough so my ankles aren't hanging out. I try to make sure that my um, sleeves are long enough so that it's not going to pull up and my wrists and my arms are going to show. So it's little things like this. When you look in the mirror, you want to make sure that you're covered for the sake of Allah and you're not out here looking beautiful for a man's approval or somebody else to tell you oh she's beautiful or oh this looks good or something like that you're not advertising yourself for nobody all right so you want to make sure that you're not out here doing that it's not that but again you know don't be down on yourself if this is what you're doing you know if you're not at that stage yet it's a gradual process like i said when i first became muslim i was wearing skinny jeans a short sleeve shirt and a hijab with full makeup you know, and this is how I started off. It's a gradual process. Once you have understanding, then you'll start to change it. You know, I would have never thought that I'd be sitting here with an ikab and seven years in. I've been seven, more than seven years, going on eight years now wearing an ikab. And since I put it on, alhamdulillah, I have not taken it off and went outside without it. So make dua, ask Allah to give you strength to practice your deen. 
uh, ask Allah to give you strength to not care what people think. All right? And may Allah make it easy for us. It's not easy be out here to be out here representing Islam and to look the way that we do. It's definitely not easy. But when we dress like this, we're soldiers of Allah, you know? When we put on our hijab, we know what we're representing. And you represent it the best way that you can. And just make dua that you get closer um, to Allah. That you have the strength to implement your deen more. And start practicing it more, inshallah. But may Allah help us all. Keep us all on the right path. And keep on guiding us. Assalamu alaikum. I mean, assalamu alaikum.